Welcome, ladies and gents. We have the grand final. The grand final of the first players won tournament. And I'm not going to commentate it because Shane just sat down, so he can commentate on it because he knows about round ball and yeah, I don't. So I'll pass this over. All right, and I'll pass this over. Okay, so we're at this is the, the inaugural players one FIFA final between Nathan and Camille. They played already. It was a tight match. Both, was of, them, both of them have walloped me by seven goals to something. Ouch, that's hammerings. That's hammerings. And uh, I think it was 2 1 last time. Is that right, Brian? 2 1. I think it's it was shame, 2, two it? 1 to Nathan. To Nathan. Oh, to Nathan. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. So you've heard of Mayweather and uh, Pacquiao. <laughs> you've heard of McGregor and Aldo. Yeah. This is Camille and Nathan. I don't, are we charging pay per view on this? Are we? Pay per view, yeah? It would be nice. It would be nice pay to get that. 50 quid. It's only 25 to see Mayweather. <laughs> it's on Skybox office. <laughs> and uh, we're going and for the same, classic, same team in classic and same FIFA colours. style. Pink, pink v white. In classic Real, FIFA yeah. style, we have Real Madrid versus Real Madrid. No electricity league action for these boys. <laughs> Boo, I would have liked a bit of electricity league action. Big time. So, what have we got here? What formations? We've got a 4 3 2 1. No, 4 5 1. And a 4 3 3 holding. Which is quite defensive. So, Camille's formation is a defensive 4 3 3. Basically, with, it's kind of like three holding midfielders. Three sent and not much, nothing between them and the attackers. Yeah, but like with Real Madrid, that just works fine because all three of their attackers are pacey, so you yeah, just do through balls yeah, yeah, and they yeah. run onto them. Like. Nathan is tipping off in pink, I think. Same as last time, yeah? Yeah, he's played. He's, yeah, I assume he's on the right hand side. And he's just feeling his way around to start with a few passes in midfield. A bit of nervousness there, I think. Do look a bit nervous? A little bit of nervousness. Moving the ball a bit quicker than normal. This is pensive. You'll see now, you'll see Camille's team has pretty much dropped all behind the ball. Quite defensively. He's, three, he's basically just seven players sitting deep. They both, got, just, they both just left themselves unbalanced for their... And he's got one, one striker up. And it, He's hoping to get Camille will be hoping to get, get, oh, get on a break here, you know. Terrible. Should should have finished that. So this formation it should play out Nathan more possession and Camille looking to get him on a on a counter really. You're clearly a man who has put some time into FIFA then. Yeah, uh, or spoof <laughs> a little bit. I like to spoof it a bit as well. <laughs> See, this is just, this is like, Ronaldo. he's choose Real, but this is Barcelona football. It's ticky tack stuff, 30 yards from goal, waiting for, he's, Nathan is just basically waiting for Pope and Camille to make a mistake with the centre half, draw oh, position. Nice. A bit like that. Ah, oh, there he is. Yeah, it would have been nice if the first one went in, the rebound was a bit cheesy. But it doesn't you'll matter take though, him, you'll take him. Ronaldo was broken. Like. Now it would be interested to see if he had any yeah. tactical change from then know. here because he was a bit nervous last time. Camille, when he scored a goal against me, he went 5 3 2, but he's not going defensive too early on. Early yeah, I don't know what um, what Nathan did or what, what Camille has done, but Nathan, every time he plays, moves Ronaldo from the left into the centre and has him as, plays his, him in his as main a, Yeah, yeah, exactly, rather than the winger, yeah. Instead of having Benzema in there. So, does he put Benzema out left, or, or what way does he do it? I actually didn't. He made the change that quick. It was actually hard to see, to be honest. I'm just kind of watching here. That is Benzema out left, Benzema yeah. That's Benzema now, yeah, on the ball on the left. So he's basically the left winger, Ronaldo in the middle. Just swap Benzema and Ronaldo, really. See, so yeah, a clue now of a defensive player, even if they're not playing defensive formation, right? You see, I wait now until Camille gets the ball in midfield again. See when Camille picks the ball up in midfield, you think he's going to pass it forward quite quickly, but he, he holds possession with that player, turns back facing his own goal, 
in other words he's protecting the ball from the tackle and but he'd rather hold possession now that lets uh nathan filter players back but he's he's basically trying to build up attacks through possession football which is tough against nathan because he's so good and you don't get you don't get you don't hold enough possession maybe to do that yeah. probably worry he worked against me anyway <laughs> when he beat me uh, I'll tell you, my problem with this game is that i haven't got a clue how to defend like, you know, Defensive is so the biggest the probably change fourteen to fifteen is defending and it like one missed one missed uh, stand in tackle and your whole defence is open. So actually what most players are doing is rather than tackling themselves, their their controlled player they'll drop a little deep and they'll use the kind of press pressure button to send the AI player. Alright, see I don't know there's a pressure button. Yeah, but that, that's oh you need a pressure if you're not using a pressure button, you're not defending really. So basically there's a pressure button that will send an AI player to close down the player on the ball, right? So you, you can tell it when you're watching it based on obviously the arrow over yeah. the head. The arrow over the head is who's being controlled. But you see the way it was there a second ago. Nate, uh, Camille took his the player with the red. Not He's not going to the ball. He's, he's marking the other player. See? See the yeah, way the guy yeah. with the red arrow, he keeps dropping a bit deeper. He's not, he's not attacking the ball himself. He's dropping that player back to mark the runner. Alright, so how, how do you apply the pressure? And then, um, I'm trying to remember buttons here. For basically, right tri the right top trigger. It's All a right, so right bumper on a Yeah, on an right, right bumper. So you're just holding that down, and that will uh, send uh, the AI player in to make the tackle. And it'll allow you to uh, mark the runner. Right. Because I'm the AI is too stupid to mark the runner. I the AI is not going to mark yeah. the runner for you. I might not have conceded 20 odd goals had, had I known about yeah, that. Yeah, that's. <laughs> well, that's. That <laughs> That's the first button you press the next time you play <laughs> should be <a> RB <laughs> or, or R1, depending on which console you're on. Oh, it has to be. Oh. I'm going to pull out a few examples of it happening here for you now. Now, oh there, no, you, there you go. Nathan's doing it now. Nathan's doing it now. He's running away from the ball. See, he's running back to the player that he thinks. Nathan now is more aggressive in it, and I noticed this when I was playing him. What he does is. He will, he's actually pre-empting where you're going to pass it. He's probably looking at you in possession and going, if I was him, where would I pass it? And he's moving his defender there. That's what yeah. he's doing. And then that's why he, when you feel like you're passing the ball and he keeps intercepting it. And that's because he's putting his player in the position to intercept because he's predicting where you're going to pass it. And that's how he, how he wins the ball back so, so frequently. Uh. I don't know what setting these boys are using, but like when when you were playing, when I was playing, now, uh, the first time I played FIFA 15 is tonight, but I played a fair bit of FIFA 14. Yeah. And we used to set it to air bolts for the automatic changes of players, so it would only change on the long bolts. Yeah, a lot of that is kind of preference. Um, I, I set it to totally manual, which means you have to change your player for every, for every single for time. E for everything, yeah. Um, air balls kind of makes sense if there's a long ball it'll do a fury and that kind of helps because you can't necessarily see who's off the screen so that if, if there's a long ball up the pitch the AI is pretty good at selecting the right player because it's it has time yeah. to do it whereas if you're on totally automatic what you will find is it's hard to always select the player you want and sometimes the game will select the player you don't want for you um, and particularly in the example we talked about defending there where you're trying to send a you're trying to send an uh, AI player to do the tackling the auto pick will tend to pick the closest player to the yeah. ball and when you're defending you don't want that you you don't want to be the guy closing down yeah, the ball you I, want I to be the guy I definitely did. didn't like having um, automatic change on because like that it just if the ball if there's a few players close to each other you just end up controlling the three of them in quick succession and yeah, yeah. you just run away from the ball constantly yeah. like. Now there is, like the uh, the manual selection isn't perfect either. Sometimes you're pressing it and you're not picking a player. You're, if that's in your mind's eye, like, you know what I mean. You have to play it a couple of times, but it, it's good. The level of control you get is so superior to to automatic. So yeah, you should definitely always be on at least air ball if not manual. But yeah, the pressure the pressure button is probably on you under underutilized in casual casual players. And like it's it's not a FIFA 15 thing. It's been there for quite a few years since the change control scheme, which I think was FIFA 13. 13. Yeah. yeah. So since then they've had that pressure button. So the last three years they've had that. And it's important to get used to that. Otherwise you can't really defend. 
notice where the red the red arrow is right it's close game change up a bit quick to kind of pull it out but we might see it on commentary in the edits afterwards but you'll, you'll notice that the blue player or the arrowed player is dropping deep all the time yeah. he's, not, he's not going for the ball and if you were chasing a game like this and you're running out of time would you use the d-pad and switch to attacking or I would you change I, formation I would and that could maybe kind of be down but that's why I we went from like seven eight was two one up to I think about fifty odd minutes or so, but then I changed to attacking, and to be honest, then he just pulled me apart and yeah. it ended up seven one. But like if I didn't do that, I wasn't gonna have a chance really to get back in anyway. It was clear, so it's kind of uh, sometimes you see a guy getting hammered, but like there might necessarily be that much between them. It's just that he's gone for the juggler when he was a goal down or something, and as a result got done on the counter attack, you know. Um, but yeah, the yeah, we definitely use the D-pad to change the auto attack. Maybe not this early, but certainly by the time we got to 70 minutes, I'd be, I'd be doing that. There's only a goal in this, so I could happen in here, really. Like, there's, this is a lot of uh, possession and interchange in midfield. There actually hasn't been very many chances on goal here, and that's because um, both players are... E well, both players are excellent in defence, but even though Nathan has a lot of the possession, Camille has his probably the best aspect of his game he'll probably say this himself is his defense he doesn't give up chances really right. and again but that probably limits his attack sometimes so you'll see i'll point out next time he picks up the ball in midfield next time his midfielder picks up the ball watch how there may be an option to pass on to a runner but he'll actually take it and he'll turn the player in possession back towards goal and no. what that is, he's rather than take the risk of losing the ball on an interception or getting tackled, he'll, he'll uh, particularly if there's a player close to him, he'll, he'll take he the ball actually, in. He didn't and actually he'd, get he'd, possession he'd, there. Yeah, he didn't get it. But you'll see, particularly if there's a opposing player close to him, he'll turn back towards goal. Like it's quite hard to dispossess you know. Everyone knows he's the playmaker, so if you're given the ball by him, you've got to so obviously, as a defender, you're protecting your goal, you're trying to get between your, your the attacker and goal, so you'll prioritise that. So he turns away, he'll, he'll, uh, you won't get that tackle. Oh, oh, nice. That has to be over now. Mio's going to have to go a lot more attacking if he wants to to try to win yeah, this I now. Yeah, I haven't noticed him chain his tactic now, to be honest. I, I, it seems he's kept it fairly consistent without it. He hasn't... Yeah, the, the collisions, player collisions in this game seem to be like really exaggerated. Like you, you they two can players be, bump into each other, and, yeah, then, and, and then they like, seem like they pause for two seconds. Yeah, and then they, they just get up. do yeah, a big yeah, jump yeah. into the into the air. Like. Yeah, yeah. Well, while we're on while we're on FIFA bashing, because there's a lot of complaints with FIFA 15 and people saying it's broken and they don't like different aspects of it. But like the biggest single problem for casual players, I think, is scripting on online. So. Um, basically what that is is you're playing online you win five matches in a row let's say and the game seems to want to build drama in matches so it will kind of give your next next player your player who may have lost five matches in a row the advantage and you can do that oh, by yeah, their players by ridiculous keeper saves by yeah. you hitting posts on tap-ins by your ai giving away a penalty one of the funniest ones I saw is like defender, like a centre half literally jump on the ground. Like literally, ball is coming into his feet and he, before the ball gets there, he jumps on the ground. And they'll do, you know, and some people say scripting. The EA don't say they're scripting, you know what I mean? There's nothing official, but anyone who plays online will, will have seen it. Like, you know what I mean? You're dominating. Well, you, you even see it. It's like one thing that really, uh, not sure if it's as prevalent in this version, but in FIFA 14, it was horrible. Like, you play a true ball to That's someone like round the keeper. Oh, I knew you play a true ball to someone like Ronaldo or Bale or something. who's just a ridiculously quick player, and they're outpacing them, and then all of a sudden this defender it just catches them up. Yeah. And just because the, they, they got have a speed the ball, boost. you know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah, it's, yeah. It just slows yeah. down players on the ball like a ridiculous amount. Like. Yeah, one of, one of the most frequent tactics you'll see is players pick teams with 4-3-3 and 2 wide, a right winger and a left winger, 
and they'll play long diagonals, particularly to a, a Ronaldo or a Messi. Um, and they'll try and cut inside. So in this situation, he'll pull back. There you go. See that? Pulls back and tries to cut inside. Now, Camille defended that quite well because there wasn't much room to pull back. Except for the but fact it, there's a penalty now. But if there was a yard ahead, he'd pull inside oh, and he'd take He's going for the classic hide the pad tactic. Dummies the shot, taps it in. 3 0 victory here. The first match between these guys was a bit tighter now. No, I think but there's uh, very little chances here. Nobody's get like the three. Does it? Fairness Camille has given up three chances and they ain't scored three times. Yeah, That's I what's happened here. <coughs> Nathan is clearly the best player here. Yeah, <laughs> I think yeah. That's, that's without a Fairly safe to say. By a distance. There we go. Think. By a distance. <laughs> our first As One Productions Play As One champion is uh, Nathan from FIFA and Camille. Inaugural winner. Congratulations. His second place. Both guys are good sports, good players. And uh, let's call it a night. Adios. Bye bye. All right, Doom here. So that's the conclusion of our first play as one event. Uh, as usual, I'd like to thank player one that I, who provided a lot of the prizes will be given out tonight. And uh, this event was put on by As One Productions. Uh, it's been a good night, our first event. Hopefully the first of many. I hope you enjoyed it. So uh, good night.